Corporate profits were at an all-time high last year. Why are so many companies cutting 10% of their workforce? It wasn't always this way. From 1948 to 1979, growth in worker pay closely matched growth in productivity. For about 100 years before the Reagan era, we had what economists and historians refer to as welfare capitalism. Corporations used to believe in caring for the well-being of their employees. They willingly and proudly provided welfare services such as profit-sharing plans, health insurance, retirement, spa services, classes, and more. In 1927, GE Chairman Owen D. Young gave a speech at Harvard Business School in which he scolded businessmen who devise ways and means to squeeze out of labor its last ounce of effort and last penny of compensation. He encouraged them instead to think in terms of human beings. Maximizing employment security is a prime company goal, wrote Earl Willis, General Electric's manager of employee benefits in 1962. Let's compare this with our business leaders of today. We need to see unemployment rise. Unemployment has to jump 40-50% in my view. We need to see pain in the economy. We need to remind people that they work for the employer, not the other way around. Fantastic! The shift in corporate policy can largely be credited to Jack Welch, the former CEO of GE and inspiration for the character of Jack Donaghy on 30 Rock. In 1968, he was promoted to general manager after bearing responsibility for blowing up a factory by pressuring employees to do whatever it takes to quickly introduce a new plastic into the market. Because great leaders take risk. Some of you may die, but it's a sacrifice I am willing to make. Jack Welch replaced Reginald Jones as CEO in 1981, bringing with him a revolutionary new vision for the future of GE. While previous CEOs sought to maximize profit through research and development and improving process, Jack understood that R&D was risky. Sometimes you blow up a factory. Mass layoffs were just a much more safe and humane way of maximizing short-term profits. Shareholders respond positively to reducing expenses. Jack devised a revolutionary new system known as stack ranking. Instead of laying off workers as a last resort during financial hardship, employees would be ranked on their productivity and the bottom 10 to 20 percent would be annually cut regardless of performance. In his campaign against loyalty, Jack laid off over 100,000 people in his first few years and closed a dozen factories. Sure, harming communities by laying off thousands of people at once may sound cold, but Jack would say what I think is brutal and false kindness is keeping people around who aren't going to grow and prosper. There's no cruelty like waiting and telling people late in their careers that they don't belong. Just when their job options are limited and they're putting their children through college or paying off big mortgages. Yeah, Jack, better to cut their job early and prevent them from being able to afford a house or college tuition for their kids. Jack is also the man that pioneered offshoring. The jobs he cut were either sent to factories overseas or contracted through temp workers in search of lower wages. Say goodbye to your pension, health insurance, and company shares. Jack believed if you weren't the number one or two brand in an industry, that industry wasn't worth competing in. Shake and bake, Jackie. GE, the company that brought us inventions such as the X-ray and light bulb, no longer focused on producing goods. It became a hollow brand. Nothing more than a sticker placed on someone else's product. Like a football team with no players and a CEO as the mascot. GE became a quasi-bank, trading money for more money. The company shifted focus to its finance division, using its excellent AAA credit rating to acquire loans for the purpose of buying and selling assets such as smaller businesses and subprime mortgages to manipulate the company's numbers on paper. One of the main ways Jack did this was, of course, stock buybacks. By purchasing shares of GE from other investors, Jack was able to reduce supply within the market and give the company's stock a short-term boost. Of course, this wouldn't have been possible without his good buddy Reagan, whom he helped lobby to deregulate the practice in 1982. Jack repurchased $10 billion worth of stock in five years. As the company gained market share through acquisitions, they closed profitable factories, laying off thousands of workers then claimed it as a loss on their taxes. Despite not producing anything, Jack turned GE into the most valuable company in the world, outperforming all others on the S&P 500. Their stock value went from 14 
$15 billion to $400 billion in 20 years. In 2009, they paid a $50 million penalty as a settlement for charges brought against them by the SEC for accounting fraud. They paid zero in taxes in 2010 and even got a $3.2 billion tax rebate. In order to effectively compete in the market, other companies quickly adopted his strategies, hollowing out research and development and shifting focus from production to venture capital and finance. Welcome to Late Stage Capitalism, working 